So let's continue our discussion on the transfer of energy as a result of heat. So once again, there are three different ways by which heat takes place. We have conduction, radiation, and convection. So we spoke about conduction, now we're going to examine convection. So unlike solids, liquids, and gases transfer energy as a result of heat by the process known as convection. And convection is the process of energy flow as a result of the mass movement of molecules and atoms over very large distances. So let's look at two different examples in which convection takes place. Let's suppose we have a pot of water and we take that pot of water and place it over a flame. Initially, energy will begin to flow from the flame into the pot of water. So because the liquid at the bottom is closer to our flame than the liquid on the top, that means the liquid on the bottom will become hot first. It will gain the kinetic energy. The molecules will begin to move and vibrate more quickly at the bottom than at the top. And so that means the liquid at the bottom will expand. It will become less dense. And so because the density at the bottom portion of our liquid drops, it will rise to the top and the cooler and more dense liquid at the top will drop to the bottom and this cyclical pathway will continue until the liquid boils and this movement this general movement of atoms and molecules inside our liquid is known as convection so the warmer water at the bottom moves up and replaces the cooler and more dense water at the top while the water at the top because of its higher density sinks to the bottom and this pathway continues until the water boils so this process by which there is an energy transfer as a result of heat is known as convection so let's move on to example number two let's suppose we have an electrical radiator or heater that is in a room now if we take the heater and plug it into a plug this will get hot and the molecules right next to the heater will also gain that kinetic energy. So they will gain kinetic energy and the air right above the radiator will expand and become less dense and it will move to the top replacing the cooler air and the cooler and more dense air will drop to the bottom and this cycle will continue taking place. So air above the radiator expands as heat is decreased in the density. The less dense air rises while the cooler and more dense air will fall. And this process of the movement of our molecules and atoms as a result of a difference in temperature is known as convection. So let's quickly uh, compare and contrast conduction and convection because these two processes are very commonly confused. So conduction is the movement of molecules, atoms, or electrons as a result of a difference in temperature over very small distances. And this generally takes place only in solids. While convection is the movement of atoms and molecules, not electrons, over very large distances. And this usually takes place mostly in liquids and gases. Now, these two processes are both a result of a difference in temperature between two systems or objects. And that's why these two processes fall under the category of heat. Heat itself is the transfer of energy between two systems or objects as a result of a difference in temperature.